Hey, Steve Mignani here with some really good junkyard news. If you're gonna be anywhere near Sherman, Texas on March 24th and 25th, know that there's gonna be an outdoor auction uh, put on by Duncan'sAuctions.com of over 200 solid Texas parts vehicles. It's gonna be Fords, GM, Mopar, lots of tractors and even forklifts. These things all have to go. It's an online auction, but also an on-site auction. If you happen to be in Sherman, Texas, you can go and bid in person or again online but all 200 vehicles have to go don't let them get crushed to learn more about this auction which happens on march 24th and 25th of 2023 uh, check it out on duncansauctions.com and keep in mind if you're seeing this after march 24th or 25th 2003 the auction's over with but before then make sure you check it out and save some of these cars don't let them go to the crusher Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardstown Auto Wrecking in Bernardstown, Massachusetts with a 1972 Chevy Nova. Now, a lot of people remember the Nova uh, for the SS, uh, really kind of cool cars, but a lot of folks don't remember the they made a four-door. Now, this is a, a third-generation Nova. These were built between 1968 and 74, and the four-door version arrived in 1972. In 73, actually, there was even a hatchback. In fact, we did a video on a hatchback Nova maybe about a month ago. Check it out in the uh, show description if you want to see what a hatchback Nova looks like from 73. But again, this one here is a 1972 four-door. And I got to remember, 1972 was the year right before the OPEC oil crisis, and sales of small cars were, were, were happening, but still in 72 44 percent of all chevrolet sold were full-size models and believe it or not the nova only accounted for 15 percent of chevy sales the vega of course was also new in 71 and so maybe nibbled into the small nova sales the vega being even smaller than nova now this one being a four-door uh, of the uh, there were two two hundred and sixty thousand two two doors built in 72 and only eighty nine thousand five hundred and eighteen four doors so like two to one, something like three to one ratio. The two doors are far more popular. Now here's the thing, the base price on this car was 2,379 bucks, only $28 more than a two door. So if you had a family and you wanted a compact Chevrolet, the Nova four door wasn't a bad call. Now at the back of this, we can see 1972, the final year for the rigidly mounted rear bumper. 1973 would bring the two and a half mile per hour bumper here with a, a shock absorber to help absorb impacts. Again, 1972, final year for, 1970, for, the, uh, the, for the standard rear bumper. But on this one here, we can see that the deck lid is nailed shut. We can't really open that. So we'll continue our little trek around here. And here is the four door function right here. Now this one is a basic, basic stripper. We can see inside this one has the automatic on the column, not a three speed manual which was certainly possible. But look at this rubber floor mat. That's not carpeting. That's actually hard blue rubber. And again, that's what uh, you got if you would cut the base Nova. This stuff right here is hard rubber, bench seat up front. Again, no super sport here. But again, 1972 first year for the four door. And we can see right here a, a uh, full rear door. <clears throat> full width back seat and uh, easy access to the back of the car. Now keep in mind this third generation Nova 68 through 74, no convertibles, no wagons. So a strictly two door or four door coupes. Let's look at the front of this thing and we can see right here there's no engine logo, there's no 350, nothing happens. So we know it's a six banger and under the hood sure enough yeah there it is. This is the 250 cubic inch six cylinder Chevy inline. Not a bad engine, but again, this is the basic workhorse of the Chevy lineup. And, uh, you know, one barrel carburetor. And right here, we see something kind of cool. This is the 1972 back to 68 grill. And for 1973, this effect here went away on the edge. A filler panel filled this in. So 72 was the final year for this grill. Now here's the thing, Chevrolet made big hay about the fact they didn't do annual model year changes on Nova. They were kind of taking a page out of the Volkswagen Beetle book, which, which, Beetle book, which said, hey, we don't change our Volkswagen Beetle because we don't have to, they're that good. Well, check this out. This is a 1972 Chevy Nova catalog right here. How to see less of your mechanic and more of America. You can see here a Chevy two-door right here. And again, there were 260,215 of these made and only 89,518 four doors. But here's that four-door, new for 72. 
But check this out. It says here, it took five years to make Nova what it is today. In other words, 68 was the first year. And it says here, uh, we spent our time refining the previous model, making improvements that make it more car. And they're even bragging in a 1972 catalog, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. They're telling you the car looks the same from year to year. Now, there were some changes they describe here. 68, the first year for the third gen, uh, more powerful standard six and V8 engines, more on those in a second. And of course, uh, cross-flow radiator, bias-mounted rear shocks, foot-operated parking brake, etc. 1969, uh, finned front brake drums, turbo hydromatic finally available, the three-speed automatic. Before that, two-speed power glide was the rule. Of course, the three-speed was optional. You could still get the two-speeder. 1970, hidden antenna, factory installed radios, uh, low-profile tires, and in 71, new side terminal energizer battery. And of course, uh, operating on low lead fuels, that's right, eight and a half to one compression, and of course, softer instrument panel knobs. That side terminal battery, by the way, is long gone, but the selling point on that, believe it or not, was that the circular side post had more contact area than a traditional post. Who knows, the only bummer with those things is when that little screw in thing strips out, it's not fun, and beyond that, if you're trying to jump your battery, there's a little tiny nub to put your, your, your clamp on. Not a lot of fun. The side post batteries kind of suck if you ask anybody who dealt with them. But here's the thing. On this Nova, the other end of the range was this, 1968. Here it is right here. It says here, toughest block on the block. They're talking here about the L78 375 horse 396 Nova SS. Again, this is 1968, only available for a couple years, the big block Nova, but there it is right there. So a lot of folks think of the Nova, they think of this right here. But we can't forget, the four doors were certainly a big part of the mix. And in 1972, the four-door production was a pretty big chunk. There were a total of uh, 68,000 or so of these things. But with that said, this one is a very utilitarian car. Now, the good news is you can put a big block in one of these things. Uh, the downside is that Chevrolet never made a four-door SS until you get into the Impala SS of the 1990s. But uh, wouldn't that have been cool? You know, a 396 four-speed, four-door Nova sleeper. Nova Deluxe, that'd be an awesome thing. But again, the only way to get a big block in a Nova was through the SS package. Uh, and speaking of that kind of thing, in 72, you could still get the 354 barrel with a four-speed transmission in your Nova, but again, only in the SS. You get a 307 if you wanted the non-SS cars and a 352 barrel, but the 354 barrel was only SS stuff, dual exhaust, etc. But that's the story of how the Chevy Nova was wasn't always a two-door. In fact, a whole bunch of them were four-doors like this one right here. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Steve Mag's YouTube channel. Uh, hit the like button, share this with your friends, and hit the bell so that you know when the next video comes out, which is tomorrow morning.